I got him. Yes. <laughs> this is the best game ever. Hello, Noodle Scooters. Welcome to the first episode of what we're going to be calling Across the Games, where we're going to take one Star Wars character and look at all their different appearances across different games and see how well it uh, holds true to the character or how competitive uh, these pieces in the games are or not competitive. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start by taking a look at Harrison Dula and all of her different appearances across different tabletop games. We're going to look at Hera in X-Wing, Hera in Armada, Hera in Star Wars the Card Game, Hera in Imperial Assault, and Hera in Destiny. Um, Hera really isn't in many video games. She is in Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens as a downloadable character, and she got gypped out of being in Disney Infinity and... Other than that, she's just in a few mobile games. So we're just taking a look at tabletop games today because that's where Hera is really making a name for herself. So let's see what Hera's like and what she's up to in board games. Just to refresh you on who Hera is, if somehow you don't remember, Hera is the captain of the Ghost. She's the leader of Phoenix Squadron and... She's one of the best pilots in the galaxy. She later goes on to become a general in the Rebel Alliance. And she also has a hell of a punch. You played that perfectly. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Hera first appeared in the TV show Star Wars Rebels back in 2014, a whole three years ago. Her first appearance in a tabletop game was in 2015 in the X-Wing Miniatures Ghost expansion pack from Fantasy Flight Games. Since Hera and the Ghost are pretty much inseparable, um, we'll be taking a quick peek at the Ghost here and there if it's popping up alongside Hera in these games. But for the most part, we're going to focus on Hera. In X Wing Miniatures, Hera's role is obviously that of a pilot. You can have Hera flying the Ghost, or you can have her flying the attack shuttle. Hera also has a crew card option in case maybe she's not flying but she's on board helping out still so if Hera's in the pilot seat of the ghost or the phantom she has the same special ability which is when you reveal a green or red maneuver you can rotate your dial to another maneuver of the same difficulty which uh if you're not familiar with the game she basically gets to switch up her maneuver to some degree in X-Wing, this is a pretty big deal because ships secretly choose maneuvers and then they reveal them one at a time in order of lowest pilot skill to highest pilot skill. So Hera's ability means she could see what the other pilots have done and adjust her move accordingly, which is something most pilots don't have the ability to do. So Hera basically gets a read of the field and she can adjust her move accordingly. So it does reflect that Hera is a really good pilot. Hera's crew card option lets you execute red maneuvers when you're stressed. Red maneuvers in X-Wing represent difficult maneuvers on a ship like flipping around or um, pulling a hard turn depending on what ship you're in. And usually you can't do this if you're stressed. Hera says, you know what, go for it. So Hera gives ships a little bit extra maneuverability when they need it in a tight spot when you have her on as a crew member. So Hera appears three times in X-Wing miniatures. Where X-Wing loses me a little bit on Hera is this big orange number on Hera's pilot cards, which is seven. This is her pilot skill that says you know, what order she gets to move, what order she gets to attack. The highest pilot skills in X-Wing is currently 9. I don't think that's ever going to change. Pilots like Darth Vader or Han Solo are pilot skill 9. And I would argue that Hera's up there with those as far as being one of the best pilots in Star Wars. But she's a 7 in this game. Sometimes needing to have a balanced game takes a little bit more precedence over having perfect theme. So in X-Wing, technically Hera's not one of the best pilots if you just look at her pilot skill number, but if she was a pilot skill nine in this game, it might end up breaking the game. As far as competitive settings go, Hera doesn't actually see a lot of table time for competitive X-Wing play. Um, her ability tends to be a little bit at odds with the fact that she's a seven. So pilots who are higher than her 
aren't going to have to worry about her pilot ability because they'll be moving after her, so she can't react to that. So her pilot ability, while good, is hurt a little bit by her lower pilot skill. Um, competitive players, if they're fielding the ghost, they tend to fly with Kanan instead. And the ghost in X-Wing is, you know, Kanan can be flying it or Chopper. So if you want to fly Hera around in the Ghost, X-Wing Miniatures is definitely the best way to do that. And the model for the Ghost in X-Wing is the best Ghost model you can find out there. If you Even if you don't play this game and you want a pretty looking Ghost figure for your desk, the X-Wing Miniatures Ghost expansion is where it's at. Then, in 2016, Star Wars Armada, also from Fantasy Flight, released the Starfighters and Squadrons 2 expansion. And among other ships, it included the Ghost. So obviously Hera was included as the pilot for the Ghost in this expansion. Armada is got a much bigger scale than X-Wing. It's not about dogfights. Armada is kind of about fleet combat, large scale. Star Destroyers and Mon Calamari cruisers duking it out. So the figure for the Ghost in this game is pretty itty bitty. And it's never going to be the center of attention in a game that has giant plastic star destroyers moving around it can still make a difference in how the battle unfolds especially if you've got Hera flying it and not a generic pilot because when Hera's in the ghost in armada she actually has a pretty great attack against other uh, squadron sized ships so she's going to be able to help take out those tie fighters and tie bombers coming at your capital ships and she also just has a great attack against capital ships if you want to use her to go after those star destroyers or light cruisers or whatever and because Hera is a great leader she has an ability that can benefit other nearby friendly ships so if you have you know some x-wings or some a-wings flying around Hera normally they could only move or attack during that phase but if Hera's around they can move and attack which is a really big deal so Hera in Armada actually seems like she's pretty good I can't speak to how much play she sees in the competitive field because I'm a little out of touch with competitive Armada Hera in Armada seems like not a bad choice, but I'm sure someone who really plays Armada is going to leave a comment and tell me how wrong I am about that. Then in early 2016, uh, Hera popped up in the Power of the Force expansion pack for Star Wars The Card Game, which is a game that not a whole lot of people play that the entire player base is kind of convinced that it's dying out. But in any case, this game is a lot of fun, especially now that we have characters from Rebels in it. So Hera shows up in Star Wars The Card Game, and she could have very easily been a pilot. There's some cards and characters that have kind of a pilot mechanic, but it seems like the designers are kind of giving up on that pilot thing. So instead, they've made Hera's card in the game show up as a very strong leader unit. If she, she has the leader keyword, but her big thing is she really wants to hang out with the other Spectres because she's a Spectre, Kanan's a Spectre, all the Rebels characters in this game have a little Spectre keyword. So if she's around other Spectres, they get more damage output. And at the start of a round, Hera can also help out a friendly Spectre unit who need a little bit of an extra pick-me-up. Hera is great in this game. She is quickly becoming, as far as competitive play goes, one of the most popular sets of Rebel cards that you can bring. Her little set of cards that you can't take care of without taking a few other cards along just by the way the rules of the game are and so if you have her you also have the ghost and the phantom tagging along too and these cards are also great so as far as competitive play goes her is probably one of the best rebel uh, sets of cards you can be bringing at this point her objective haunting the empire is solid the phantom and the ghost are great to have around and if you're running other specter units Hera is just a no-brainer, because Hera likes helping out her specters and making them better. So I think they nailed this card, just because Hera makes her team better. And then a few months after Hera landed in Star Wars The Card Game, she showed up in my personal favorite game, Imperial Assault, from Fantasy Flight Games. Who else? Um, Hera comes in the Hera Syndulla and C-110P Ally Pack, which... It includes Chopper as well, which is one of the reasons it's one of the best packs that have come out for that game. But we'll be talking about Chopper in a different video probably, because I love Chopper. Imperial Assault is kind of an on-the-ground firefight, little, you know, troop-based game. You've got little miniatures of your people running around. And Hera in this game uh, gets the leader and smuggler keywords, which I think are 
you know, obvious choices for her character. She's a leader. She also, you know, is kind of a smuggler. And having the leader and smuggler keywords give her access to some really good command cards if you're playing the skirmish mode, such as you can have Hera give your people an inspiring speech or she can bust out some smuggled supplies. Hera's call the shots ability might be the main reason to bring her along on a mission for most people, because once again, Hera's thing is she's helping out her teammates by making their attacks more effective and much more likely to land a deadly blow on the enemy. Hera's able to make sure they can hit more accurately, do a little bit more damage, or make sure they get access to their special abilities. Although in Imperial Assault, Hera's not just there to sit back and call the shots. She does have a decent attack on her own, so if the need arises, she can be at the front line shooting stormtroopers alongside everyone else. As far as competitive play goes, Hera's still trying to find her spot. Um, she's certainly a solid unit, and very well costed at only four squad points. So she's easy to fit into a list. Um, and you, you do see her making her way in a competitive list now and then, but she's far from a must have on a rebel team, which I think makes her design pretty solid because you can always find a great use for her. She's never a weak link on your team, but since she's not so great that she's an obvious choice, I think that makes a good design decision because now you, uh, some choice has to go into if you want to bring her along or not. Now we're going to take a peek into the future a little bit. This hasn't actually happened yet, but hopefully this will be hitting store shelves in the next month or so at your local game store. So that's going to be the next wave of boosters for Star Wars Destiny from Fantasy Fly Games. Uh, the wave is called Empire at War and it looks like it's going to have a big focus on characters from Rebels. We already know that Sabine and Admiral Thrawn and Chopper and Ezra are going to be in it, and, of course, Hera. So we don't know what all the other characters in this wave are, but Hera and the Ghost have already been revealed in this, um, seems like a very vehicle-centric wave. So this time, Hera is taking the role of a pilot again. She's not kind of in a leader role. This Her, her subtitle here is actually Phoenix Leader, but she's all about the vehicles this time around. In Destiny, you it's kind of like a... You just have some people and they're trying to beat up the other people. So you can have Hera and Luke Skywalker trying to fight Kylo Ren and Jango Fett. That could happen in Destiny. They, they roll up their dice and they can be doing damage or gaining resources or getting shields and a variety of other things. Hera's die, at least initially to me, looks kind of underwhelming. Oh, she only does one range damage. She's got to focus one shield, one resource. Kind of whatever. But then you see her special and her special says... You can play a vehicle from your hand for free, and after the action phase ends, if that vehicle's still in play, return it to your hand. A free vehicle. Usually, vehicles are really expensive. We have a look at the Ghost now in this game. The Millennium Falcon's been in this game. Those vehicles cost a lot of resources, which usually takes a few turns to build up to get out, but Harris says, no, you can just come in right now, come in for free. At the end of the round, it pops back in your hand, but that's okay, because you can probably bring it out for free again next turn. So the next wave of Destiny, is putting a really big focus on vehicle cards, and Hera, so far, what we've seen is the best character you want if you're going to be playing with a vehicle-focused deck. So if you are playing Destiny in any sort of competitive setting, I've got a really good feeling you're going to be seeing a lot of Hera on the table at tournaments and things like that in the future after these cards are out. Hera seems to be generating a lot of buzz among the Destiny community. I'm excited to see what kind of a splash she makes. And that's pretty much all of Hera's major appearances in tabletop games. There are a couple honorable mentions for Hera in other tabletop games. Galactic Connections by Tops is... she's in that, I guess. It's kind of an abstract puzzle game. It's just her face and some tick marks. That's about all. It doesn't really capture her character by any means. And also she's in a little kids game called Rebel Missions. And I guess, you know, you can say I'm playing as Hera, but that's just because you have the little Hera card in front of you and it doesn't really, you know, you, you don't have any special abilities that are any different from the person who's playing as Kanan or Zeb or Sabine. Technically she's in it, so I counted on my list. And as far as I know, that is all of Hera's appearances in every tabletop game ever. Oh, wait. She's also in this super dumb game called Top Trumps, which I picked up at Star Wars Celebration in London. But you don't have to care about that because that game is really dumb. That's going to do it for our look at Hera Syndulla across all the tabletop games she's in. Um, and 
to thank you for actually sitting through this video, I'm going to give you a chance to win this Hera promo card from X-Wing Miniatures. It has different artwork. Uh, it was a promo given away a couple years ago at Regionals, I think. Um, so if you want a chance to win this card, leave a comment on this video. Be sure to share it with your friends if you think they would like it. You don't have to share it to be entered to win, but if you liked it and you think someone else might like it, please share this video with your friends and make sure you're subscribed. Um, so leave a comment and subscribe if you want a chance to win this card. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what um, characters you'd like to see covered in future episodes of Across the Games, because there's certainly a lot of them, and I have a big spreadsheet tracking all of these characters and how many games they appear in. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you liked it. <laughs>